The first type of limit we look at is products. We call a category I discrete, provided the assignment of objects to identity morphisms is bijective, i.e. the only morphisms in I are identities. We then have the following definitions. One, let D be the collection of finite discrete categories, then A has finite products provided A has D limits. Similarly, two, let D be a collection of small discrete categories, then A has products provided A has D limits. For notational convenience, given a diagram of shape I in A with I discrete, we use this notation to describe the product. This means that if we are given another cone over D, there is a unique factorization, H, of this cone via the product. We have the following characterization of finite products. The following are equivalent. One, A has finite products, and two, A has a terminal object and binary products. For the proof, one implies two, A fortiori, since the terminal object is the empty product, and binary products are limits of a finite discrete category. For the converse, let D be a diagram with I finite discrete. If I is empty, then we are done since the terminal object already exists in A by the hypothesis. So we suppose that I is non-empty and we choose an ordering of the objects in I. In other words, the objects in I can be labeled from 0 to n for some natural number n. Then by finite induction, we set L sub 0 equal to D sub 0 and L I plus 1 to be the binary product of D sub I plus 1 and L sub I. Then we see that there exist projections from L sub N given by concatenating the projections of the binary products. We name these projections P sub I for each I. We claim that by setting L to be L sub N along with the projections we have just described is the product in A over D. And we do this by verifying that it satisfies the universal mapping property of the product. So let qi from t to di be another cone over d by the universal mapping property of binary products and finite induction. For each i, there exists a unique morphism h from t to li. Therefore, by setting h to be h sub n, this gives us the unique factorization via l. Therefore, l is indeed the product, completing the proof. We also have that in the category of sets, as given as a model of zermelo frankel axioms, has products. For the proof, let I be a small discrete category and D a diagram of shape I in set. Recall that from the axioms of zermelo frankel we can define a set of maps from a set A to a set B as those subsets phi of the Cartesian product of A cross B such that one phi is totally defined and two phi is uniquely defined. We write elements in this set as arrows and switch to function notation as opposed to relation notation. Then we define the set L as those set maps from I, the object set of the category I, to the union of sets D sub I such that phi evaluated on I is in D sub I. And the projection maps P sub I taking phi to phi evaluated on I. We claim L along with these projection maps is the limit of D. To do this, we again show that it enjoys the universal mapping property of the product. So suppose that QI from T to DI is a cone over D. Then the set map H from T to L, which assigns an element X in T to the map H of X, which takes I to QI on X, is the unique factorization via the cone on L, which we leave you to verify. And the reason why we're proving this now is that we need it for the following result. Let little a be an a object. Then the covariant Hom functor on a preserves all products, including the large ones, which exist in a, i.e. the map h induced by the set product is bijective. Note that by using zermelo frankel with the axiom of Grotendieck universes, there exists a category of sets such that this Hom functor is well defined. For the proof, this map H takes an amorphism phi from little a to the product of di. 
to the i-tuple pi precomposed by phi in the set product, where pi is the projection from the product on di to di. We can easily obtain an inverse to h by assigning the collection of amorphisms psi sub i to psi, where psi is induced by the universal mapping property of the product in A. Then as a corollary, we have for a small category A, the following are equivalent. One, A has products, and two, A is a complete lattice. In other words, it is a complete and co-complete thin category. Thin meaning that between any two objects, there exists at most one morphism between them. For the proof, since a lattice is just a complete order and the product in a lattice is the meat, it is enough to show that A is a thin category. In other words, for each pair of A objects, A and A prime, the cardinality of morphisms in A from A to A prime is at most one. Assume to the contrary that there exists A objects A and A prime such that the cardinality of morphisms from A to A prime is greater than or equal to two. Let the category i be equal to the morphism set a sub 1. And we can do this since we're assuming a is a small category. And consider the constant functor d, which takes each i in i to a prime. Then by the previous result, we have that the cardinality on the set of morphisms from a to the product is equal to the cardinality of the product of the morphisms from a to a prime which is greater than or equal to the cardinality of the power set of morphisms in A, which is strictly larger than the cardinality of the morphisms in A by Cantor's theorem. This is clearly ridiculous since a HOM set cannot be bigger than the cardinality of all the morphisms in A, and this completes the proof. And it is this result which clarifies why we included the condition of smallness in defining a category two half products, because otherwise we would obtain just these somewhat trivial categories when we say a category has products.